Like when I hear black girl magic, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's nice. That's cute. But in general, when I look out in our real society, I see mothers who bend over backwards to make sure that one son who's in sports makes it almost at the detriment of the other children and the daughters. And so I know we have this conversation we keep hearing or there's a phrase uh, mothers raise their daughters and coddle their sons, baby their sons. Um, I think when when homes are not together, and again, I speak from the perspective of my my mother and father were married for a long time, and then my mother got married to my stepfather two years after. So there's only like a less than a two year window where I guess I could consider being a single parent. My mom was a single parent, uh, and I honestly, I without two different type of a man and a woman in a home involved with the children you're going to get someone left out of the loop either way. Right. And and I don't always believe it's our sons and I don't always believe it's black women. I think sometimes depending on the situation, it's one or the other. There, there's yeah, not a yeah. big gap. Because that's why single parenthood doesn't work. You right. Know, that's I totally agree with you. You're right. You're right. On, on, on that part, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Give it to the father. You're right. So, our community has an issue with putting a strong foot down to say, what is an acceptable age that you should have a plan and you should be on to something. And in, unfortunately in our community, we're quick to say, well, college ain't for everybody. That's fine. But your 18 to 25 year old son should be going somewhere, some direction, some purpose. He shouldn't just be aimlessly floating. So I've always been very thankful for my family. Every single young man in our family has gone through the service. Right. Three to four years, get some service. Now you got the GI Bill. You can go to college for free. You get a VA VA loan. You got options. Mm. You may not like that we pushed you this way, but we weren't going to send you straight to college to let you waste four years of your life not knowing what you wanted to do. Right? And every single one of my cousins, when I meet them and they're 25, 28, 29, and I meet, I'm just going to be go there, a regular general 28-year-old, I'm like, it's night and day. He on a whole nother path. He on a whole nother lane. Uh, a lot of people, if you actually look this up, the army is getting the most late recruits they've ever had in the past five years. Men, 35, 36, 37, 38 years old, joining the army this late in life so that they can have some type of pension. So when people argue that women aren't being inspirational, at some point we have to say in our our community, in our society that, hey, boo-boo, you 29. It's time to do something. Right. Like we we will support you. We'll do whatever. And I think a lot of these these men's mothers, they are to blame to some degree. But at some point we have to say in our community, in our society, hey, sir, you're over 28. It, it's time. It's time, brother. I know you've been doing the sports thing. Forever. I know you've been doing the rapping thing, the barber thing, the whatever. <laughs> but it's time. And so for me, um, when I see women talking about that, if you're talking about a man that's 48, 50, 45 talking about you know inspiring him sir that's there's a there's a disconnect there that's that's well, a man that's never did a, a, an assessment of himself well well there's some truth to what you're saying erica but I'm, I'm gonna look at this thing from a holistic perspective and you know what i call healthy and negative socialization right. i don't think black boys and men are socialized to be inspired you know we have black girl magic you know we have all these different uh you know intri- intricacies that more or less seek to inspire women but we do not adequately do the same thing equally for our boys. There was a famous um, Nigerian woman, I believe, or a woman. She was saying we must rise our boys up to the same level we raise our girls. Because, see, our girls come in with a high self-esteem. Some have an overinflated self-esteem. Our boys come in with a very low self-esteem. Therefore, they defer power, which in essence make that woman lose respect from them, for them. And so it becomes a very negative karmic cycle, Erica, where... Mm-hmm boys are actually trying to refine themselves in this negative karmic cycle to more or less acquiesce to the whims of a woman they don't, excuse my language, give a damn about. So so, so what I'm saying is that when you elevate boys equally to the same level you elevate girls, then the boys become optimized to be synchronized with a woman that have a healthy self-esteem. And he have a very healthy self-esteem too. But, you know, I think, unfortunately, Erica, all of our women have, have believed the hype. Um, you know, I've always said that, you know, black men never had the power to oppress our women. You know, we might have domestic issues at the micro level, but we never had um, power at the macro level or the group level to oppress our women. 
um, um, domestic issues are not endemic to black men and black women. It's endemic to all ethnic groups. But I think our women were compromised and they fell for the lie that, you know, we oppressed them. But black men never had the power to oppress. We were mules of the same burden. We were working together. Actually, we were doing great until I feel like some of some, not all, some of our women became compromised. So I started what I'm doing and I love what Anton is doing because I say it all starts with the mind. You can be a millionaire and still be a broken man. You can be 28 chronologically, Erica, but psychosocially, you can be 15. A lot of grown men are chronologically 50, but they have not successfully, successfully, Erica, went through their healthy stage of psychosocial development. So, you know, we look at it through the lens of pragmatism, and we tend to assume that because they're a certain age, they should more or less have reached a pinnacle. But that's um, that's that can be a fallacy to say the least, because even though they can be chronologically 40 or 50, developmentally, they could be, you know, 20, 30. Some are still probably three or four because they've been through trauma. So that's something we got to take in consideration. And please hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying like Anton okay. always talk about the victim of limits. I'm not saying that we got to continue to admire in our victimhood. When you know better, you do better, and you raise yourself up to the top. So I'm not saying that, you know, to continue a perpetual cycle of victimhood. I'm not saying that. But I do believe that once you understand the pathology that lies within your mind, you must do something to change it. But the bad thing is, Erica, therapy is stigmatized in our community, and we don't see the inherent benefit of it. I was gonna. I was gonna say. I've heard that people. I've heard men say that before about black girl magic and all this stuff. But I also. I kind of look at it from a perspective that again, fifty-two percent of us live in the suburbs, and I feel like black girl magic came out of we are mingling in to suburbia with a uh, white and Hispanic or whoever counterparts. And I don't see. I know, and this is from my perspective again. I'm a woman. I'm on the reverse of your conversation. I don't see where, and I would say maybe black boys who are not in sports are maybe not encouraged, but I see black men who are in sports, they're almost coddled to adulthood, right? Like they're, they're like pushed up on a pedestal that everybody has that one cousin that played at some football game or went to NFL. And we always talk about that one male. Um, I feel like there's a lot of uh, heroism in sports for black men. And so we don't even... Like when I hear black girl magic, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's nice. That's cute. But in general, when I look out in our real society, I see mothers who bend over backwards to make sure that one son who's in sports makes it almost at the detriment of the other children and the daughters. And so I know we have this conversation we keep hearing, or there's a phrase, uh, mothers raise their daughters and coddle their sons, maybe their sons. Um, I think when, when homes are not together, and again, I speak from the perspective of my my mother and father were married for a long time, and then my mother got married to my stepfather two years after. So there's only like a less than a two-year window where I guess I could consider being a single parent. My mom was a single parent. Uh, and I honestly, I, without two different type of a man and a woman in a home involved with the children, you're going to get someone left out of the loop either way. Right. And and I don't always believe it's our sons and I don't always believe it's black women. I think sometimes depending on the situation, it's one or the other. There, there's yeah, not a yeah. gap. Because that's why single parenthood doesn't work. You right. Know, that's I totally agree with you. You're right. You're right. On, on, on that part, you're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Give it to the father. You're right. 